This is the son of an African Maasai, warrior chief. He is the blood brother of one of these young men. What is your name, please? My name is Kevin Gorman. My name is Kevin Gorman. My name is Kevin Gorman. Only one of these young men is the real Kevin Gorman. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. Tom Poston, Peggy Cass, Gene Rayburn, and Kitty Carlisle. On to Tell the Truth with your host, Bud Collier. Thank you very much and welcome once again to To Tell the Truth. Brought to you this week by Salem Cigarettes. Gene, welcome back. Nice to have you back with us. I'm delighted to be back, Bud. Thank Speaking you. Speaking on behalf of all of us, I'm sure we all wish you the best of good luck on your new show, The Match Game. Oh, thank you. When does it start? It starts a week from today. A week It'll from be today on the 4 o'clock in the mm -hmm. afternoon. Well, yes. Good luck. Thank you. Here, it's a great show, and I'm sure you'll make it even better. Very well, panel. Will you please open your envelopes for the first time, take out your affidavits, and follow along as I read from this first one. I, Kevin Gorman, am the youngest outsider ever to be made a member of the Maasai the famous lion-hunting tribe of East Africa. I lived with them in their native village. Every morning I went hunting with Dione, the son of the chief. Dione taught me to use a spear, and I taught him how to fire a rifle. Dione taught me how to track big game, and I taught him and the other junior members of the Maasai how to play baseball. After I had been there for a while, they painted my face with cow's blood, gave me a stick and a shawl, and initiated me into the tribe as Dione's blood brother. Signed, Kevin Gorman. Now, panel, these three young men all claim to be Kevin Gorman, honorary son of an African chief. And we start this questioning with Peggy Cass. Peggy? Um, thank you. Uh, Kevin Gorman, number one, uh, what were you doing in uh, East Africa? Well, we, my father, my stepfather and I, we went to visit the Maasai natives. I see. Number two, is your father an anthropologist? Well, no, it's my stepfather. He's a photographer. Oh, I see. Uh, number three, the shawl. Was it a lion skin shawl? No, it's cattle. From uh, cattle. Oh, like a cow shawl. Yes. That's right. Well, and... <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, uh, d d number one, did they like to play baseball? Yes. Number two, were they any good at it? <coughs> well, yes. After I uh, taught them for a while, they really caught on. Uh, number three, who was the umpire? Me. No. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, Gene Rayburn. Thank you, bud. Number two, uh, what gauge was the rifle that you used when you taught your blood brother to shoot? It was, it was a 270 Winchester. Mm -hmm. Number three, do uh, you have any idea how big the bore is of a 270 Winchester? No. Number three, uh, what was the temperature in Africa when you were there? Do you remember? I don't know. Number one, uh, what was the purpose of the pictures that your father took? Well, it was a, it was a trip for me that was an awful lot of fun. Kitty. Number one, that must have been quite a trip. How long were you there? About two weeks. Ah. Number two, can you tell me the name of the African spear that your blood brother used? Oh, uh, no, I don't know the name of it. How long was it? Oh, uh, it was about uh, five feet long. Number three, what, did you ever catch anything with it or hit anything? No, not really. <laughs> Number one, what, how long did this ritual last when you became a blood brother? About an hour or two. Number two, how many people did you recruit for the baseball game? Oh, I don't know. I got around as much as a regular baseball team. Number three, did they throw a ball as well as the average American boy? Well, no. See, I started them underhand, throwing the ball underhand, and they started throwing it overhand to themselves. <laughs> but they did finally catch on. Yes. Number one, did they have music with this rite? With this well, ceremony? Th they had a little. What did they have, drums? Yes, like drums and tom-toms. Tom. Wonderful. <laughs> Such a pleasure. <laughs> Number three, uh, who are the greatest warriors in, uh, among the African tribes? Do you know? Barani. 
They're the Maasai African warriors. Thank you. Number two, what does that tribe uh, eat? What is a sort of, sort of a special dietary thing of that particular tribe? Do you know? They eat uh, beef. They uh, eat, yeah, they don't eat anything else. They don't eat any vegetables or anything, just beef. Number one, what, what's that about drinking uh, cow's blood? How do they go about doing that, number one? Hmm. Well, they, they pinch the jugular vein with an arrow of a cow, and they take it out, like, into a little container. And then they, put, then they get some milk from a cow, and they, they stir it together for a while. And That's then they... trafe, ain't it? I'm glad. <laughs> this is number three. Thank you. Oh, am I through? Oh, I must say, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm glad you asked that question. <laughs> <laughs> My color is still the same as when I came in. <laughs> well, it's time to vote if you can work it after that one, so please do so. Mark your ballots right now and without consultation, panel, as you vote for number one, number two, or number three. And our team of challengers will, of course, receive $250 for every incorrect vote. All ballots, Mark? No, 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 no. wait a minute. Uh, Mark, come up there. We haven't got that much time. <laughs> All right, Tom, for whom did you vote? Well, I voted for number three. It was something real sweet about the way he smiled when, when uh, Peggy said, <laughs> Kevin, number one. He sort of went... <laughs> and besides that, I think the first one looks like our producer and the second one looks like our director. And I think <laughs> you've got a couple of fingers. <laughs> Peggy. Well, I voted for number three, too. Because you know what? I believed him when he said he taught them to play underhanded rather than overhanded. That I don't know why. That could be misinterpreted, but we won't <laughs> proceed with that. Uh, Gene. Gee, but I think uh, they were all just wonderful, and it was a difficult choice. But I voted for number three because his answers sounded most convincing to me. And, and he said, I don't know once, too. And that sort of threw me to his direction. Kitty. Well, I was going to vote for number three because of the question you asked, Tom, about the warlike tribe, but I didn't hear his answer. So I voted for number one because he gave the marvelous answer about how the ritual uh, drinking was done. Let's not go through it again, huh? <laughs> all right, the votes are all in, the minds are made up, and let's proceed to truth right now as we learn which of these young men actually is the adopted son of an African chieftain. So will the real Kevin Gorman please Stand up. It is. <laughs> Kevin, how old are you? Eleven. Eleven years old. Would you like to see a picture of Kevin and his, uh, his blood brother? Oh, yeah. yeah. All right, yeah. take a look at the monitor. There they are. Number one, would you tell us your real name and what you really do? My name is John Bergen, and I live in Rye, New York. And number two, your real name, please. My name is Peter Keepnews. I edit a humor magazine called Foolish, and I write rock and roll songs. <laughs> go, go. Fellas, I want to tell you, this panel is a little too smart to be kind, even to youngsters, I'm afraid. They got three right and only one wrong, but... That's $250 from Salem Cigarettes, and you can divide that, I'm sure, happily, and I hope it brings you great happiness. Thanks for being with us. Goodbye, God bless you, and a Merry Christmas to you. <laughs> now, panel, as you may have noticed, a set of drums has been placed on our stage. The drums belong to one of our top professional jazz drummers. As a matter of fact, some of the nation's leading jazz critics have referred to him as a unique artist, a phenomenon, and the greatest. Let's meet him now. What is your name, please? My name is Barry Miles. My name is Barry Miles. My name is Barry Miles. Now, will you follow along with your copies of this affidavit, panel? I, Barry Miles, am a professional drummer. Currently, I head up my own jazz group of adults. We accept those engagements which do not interfere with my schoolwork. I made my public debut at the age of nine, and since then I have played with such greats as Woody Herman, Coleman Hawkins, George Shearing, and Dave Brubeck. I've also made an LP album. The high point of my career to date was my foreign Goodwill Jazz Tour under the auspices of the U.S. State Department.
Signed, Barry Marsh. Panel, you heard these young men all claiming to be the same person, namely Barry Miles, jazz drummer extraordinary. And we start this cross-examination with Kitty Carlisle. Kitty? Thank you, bud. This is an extraordinary young man, whichever one he is. I look at their faces when I say that to see which one smiles. Um, number one, how, who did you study with when you first began? Well, I studied drums with Art Magyar. Number two, is your family musical? Well, my mother plays the piano um, by ear. By ear. <laughs> number three, where did you tour on this Goodwill tour? South America. And number one, do you know who August Heckscher is? No. Number two, who was the head of the department that sent you on the tour? Um, I'm not sure about that. Number three, do you know? No, I'm not sure. And uh, number one, did you tour all the countries in South America? I toured Europe, seven countries. Oh, you toured <laughs> Europe? <laughs> Tom Poston. Oh, it's my turn. Let me see now. I, I've, um... It's too bad Cheetah Rivera isn't here, because if this kid is a professional drummer, that's her a favorite in, in, uh, play. Let me ask you, number two, do you know a drummer named Thig Pen? No, I'm afraid not. Do you know number three? No. Number one, just let me quickly ask you if you know Thig Pen. He's a friend of mine. Do you know him? Yes. Uh, number one, what is uh, Singleton's first name? Zudi. Zudi. Uh, can you tell me, number two, what is a paradiddle? Well, it's, uh, it's a stroke with a right hand, a left hand, and two rights. And it can be reversed to um, a left, a right, and two, two lefts. Uh, Peggy. <laughs> well, my. Uh, number three, do you know who Leonard Feather is? No, I don't. Number two, do you know what downbeat is? <clears throat> yes. What is it? <laughs> um, well, it's, an, it's a name of, uh, of a nightclub. I see. And number one, uh, what's a tattoo? Oh, not a, I don't mean that kind of a tattoo. I mean, there's a, there's a ro uh, drum beat that's a tattoo, is there not? No, not that I know. Oh, number three. <laughs> well, there I go. <laughs> <laughs> Gene Raver. Thanks, bud. Number three, do you know what a tattoo is? Have you ever heard of that? No. Uh, expression in connection with drumming? No, I haven't. Number two, do you know the name of Dave Brubeck's theme song? No, I'm afraid not. Uh, number one, when you tune a drum, what is a mechanism used? Well, it's a key or used around the sides of the drum. And what do you tune it to? Do you tune it to any note in the piano? Well, in jazz, it's not any special note. Well, how do you know how much to tighten the key? Well, it depends on the person's uh, way of uh, thinking. I see. Number three, what countries did you tour? That's all the time we have, I'm sorry to say. We'll have to leave him out there in limbo and find out more about it as we vote. So please do vote, if you will, right now. Mark your ballots without consultation. Voting as you go for number one, number two, or number three. All ballots marked? Tom, what is your choice this time? I voted for number one. Uh, I well, I'll tell you the truth. Earl Thigpen is one of the finest drummers we have in the country, and I figured that, that uh, the boy might possibly know him. Besides, Zudi Singleton is such a great name. Well, thank I God that him. was on the level. <laughs> 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 because I follow your question. Sometimes you but, fool but me. But wasn't number two beautiful with the <laughs> paradiddle? That's what a paradiddle is, because yes. it's one version of paradiddle. Peggy, would you like to get your vote in? Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know the Thigpen fella, but I voted on him because of Zudi Singleton. I think that's the name. And, be, and I don't know. He just, I just thought he was him. All right. Gene, what about your choice? Number two deserved the vote on the basis of his explanation of paradiddle, but yeah. I think uh, Tom identified number one for us with his clever questioning there, old beanbag. You were very good. And Kitty? Well, I voted for number one for the same reason. Oh. That <laughs> makes it unanimous all the way down the line. Wait, all minute, right. Number one post and run. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Tom. Boy, if you're wrong. Okay. We'll find out now whether this unanimous vote is a good one or not. Gentlemen, would you mind coming out and standing behind the drums here? Now, will the real Barry Miles please take off?
<laughs> Thank you, Barry. That was a real treat. Number two, would you... Quiet now, Barry. <laughs> uh, number two, would you tell us your real name and what you really do? My name is Craig Pruitt, and I live in Purchase, New York. And number three, may we have your name? I live in Glen Cove, Long Island, and my name is Roy Campanola, Jr. <laughs> For those of you who may not happen to know, Roy's father, Roy Campanella, Sr., is one of the all-time greatest baseball players this <laughs> ever made. Well, I'm sorry, fellas, that the panel is so smart, they're really real hip tonight. I don't know what gives with them. But in that case, from us on the show and from Salem Cigarette, $150 comes your way anyway. Uh, divide it happily and may it bring you happiness. Thank you for being with us. Good night. God bless you and a very Merry Christmas. <laughs> you know, winter can be fun, but winter can also be big trouble. But spring, uh-uh, spring is endlessly refreshing. Very well, let's meet our third team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Tick Pindar. My name is Tick Pindar. My name is Tick Pindar. Oh, I hate to stop you looking at them, panel. I, mean, I would love a picture of your faces right now. I really would. Okay, follow along with your copies of this affidavit, will you? I, Tick Pindar, am the country's youngest professional clown. I'm a serious seventh grade student Monday through Friday and do my clowning mostly on weekends and during the summer months. The first time I ever put on clown makeup was when I joined my father in an amateur clown act for our local parent teachers association. We won first prize. This appearance resulted in a whole new career for my father and me. We turned pro. Later on, my mother joined the act. We are billed as Tick, Tacky and Toe, signed Tick Pindar. Three utterly entrancing young people, I think you'll agree this time. Panel all claiming to be Tick Pindar, professional clown at a tender age. And we start with the star of Mary Mary, I guess, Tom Poston. Oh, that's really too sweet. Number three, are you a boy or a girl? Don't, don't take offense, <laughs> because you can't really tell too much. I'm a girl. Are you all ladies? Number two, you a lady? No, I'm not. You're not a lady. <laughs> number one, you are. Then. Yes, I am. Yes, you are. Uh, number three, what do you use rosin for in your act? I don't know. Don't use it, right? Do you use rosin, number two? I Tick? don't even know what it is. <laughs> Tick number one, what's rosin for? I don't know. Oh, well, you don't use it, all right. Uh, number one, what is hand balancing? Hand balancing, do you know? Number one? No. Do you know number two? No, I don't. Well, Peggy, no help uh, this round. Uh, uh, number three, uh, there was a circus act, a high wire act that had an, a very serious accident this year. Do you know the name of that act? No, I don't. Do you number two? I can't think of it. Number one to you? No. no. Thank you. <laughs> we, uh, number two, number two, when you work professionally in the summer, do you join a big circus? Uh, no. Oh, number one, what do you do? Appear at benefits and things? Yes. Thank you. I love your eyelashes, number one. <laughs> Jean. Thanks, bud. Number three, are you having difficulty seeing over your nose? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, uh, do you put on your own makeup? Uh, yes, sometimes. Can you name some of that stuff you've got on your face? Does it have names? I think it's called grease paint. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> number one, what do you call? Slippery called? answer, no matter <laughs> what. <laughs> sir. Number one, what have you got on your face, sir? Clown white. Clown white? And what's the rest of it? What did you use to make your eyelashes? Well, eye pencil. Eye pencil. Eye bud. Kitty. <laughs> Number two, what is your nose made out of? Uh, uh, plastic. And how does it stay on, number three? By, um, glue. <laughs> Number one, how do you get it off? Pull. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. 
Number two, do you speak in your act or do you just do pantomime? Uh, sometimes we do pantomime, sometimes we speak. Number three, have you ever heard of the Zakinis? Yes, I have. And do you know what their act is? I think they're blown out of a cannon. Thank you. And that's all the time we have, panel. So on the basis of all of the information you have elicited by this question period, mark your ballots. Mark them at once and without consultation among you. And vote for number one, number two, or number three. Uh, I wish we could get him to do something. All ballots marked? Wait, wait, wait. No. Mark them up. Mark them up. Take your uh, guesses now and let it stand. All set? Okay. Tom, which one is They're your selection? They're really too sweet for words. I just love them anyway. I, I voted for number one. I don't know. <laughs> cutie pie. Peggy, what is your vote? Well, I voted for number one because she's so perky and she sits up so straight and she, I just think she'd be a marvelous entertainer. Gene, what about you? I agree with Peggy. I voted for number one because if she's not a clown, She'd make the greatest clown of the world. She's got a real outgoing, extroverted personality, <laughs> but I'm wrong. <laughs> and Kitty. Well, I voted for number three. I wanted to vote for number one on the basis of her voice, which makes me laugh just to hear it. <laughs> but number three gave me a very good answer on the Zikinis. They are indeed blown out of a cannon, so I voted for number three. Very well, there you are. You stand to fall by it now as we come to the moment of truth and find out which of these charming young lady gentlemen happens to be the real professional clown. So will the real. Tick Pindar, please stand up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you're the ones that really made the loot hit tonight, I tell you, and it's the right time of year to do it. Tick, do us a favor, will you? Show us how you really look. Oh. <laughs> Number one, you who ought to be a clown, we are told. What is your real name? My name is Michelle Farr, and I live in New York, and I look like this. <laughs> And number three, your real name, please. My name is Valerie Monroe, and I live in Rutherford, New Jersey, and I look like this. <laughs> oh, boy, you're going to be happy kids when I tell you, if you don't already know, and I'm sure you do, that there were four incorrect votes at $250 each. That's $1,000 for you to divide from sale and cigarettes. <laughs> I beg your pardon? Away. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it was, it was the right method. And in any event, I hope it brings you great happiness and to your families. And thanks for being with us. Goodbye, God bless you, and Merry Christmas to you. Now here's how you can get relief of headache pain. is Christmas, and this is our Christmas card to you, with all best wishes for the healthiest and happiest of holidays. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Dean, would you come in and help me? Valerie? Okay. Merry Christmas, Merry Tom. Merry Christmas. To Tell the Truth is a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production. Have a Merry Christmas, but make sure it's a merry one. Drive carefully on this, the most dangerous holiday of the year. To Tell the Truth has been brought to you tonight by Salem, the cigarette that refreshes your taste. This is Johnny Olson speaking for To Tell the Truth. This program was pre-recorded.